there's a hadith, and I think it fits in quite well with this uh, topic, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, he gave an example of people being on a ship. And if you can take off with this about, you had a certain group of people on the top of the ship, and you had other people on the bottom of the ship. And then from here, if these people didn't come down and give them that loving advice, and then every, the ship ends up sinking. This is a hadith that's narrated in Bukhari, actually. It's a very beautiful hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, he described the ummah, he described the nation as, you know, the believers, as, as, as a group of people on a ship. And he says that the people on the upper deck, uh, you know, are, are the, the worshippers, they're the religious ones, and then the people on the lower deck are the sinners. And he said whenever they need water, they don't want to disturb those that are on the upper deck. So they drill a hole into the bottom of the ship to get their water. And so the people on the upper deck, they say that, they, they come down and they yell at them and they say, why did you drill a hole into the bottom of the, of the ship? And they say, because you were, you were agitated by our asking you. You were irritated by us. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that if they let them do that, then the entire ship sinks. Otherwise, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the entire ship is saved. So the point is, there's so many different things. Actually, I teach a class uh, called Prophetic Musings. Yeah. Uh, some of the analogies of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I go into quite some depth with this example. Um, uh, there are so many things. Number one, there's an African proverb that if the youth are not initiated into the village, they will burn it down to feel its warmth. Mm -hmm. and SubhanAllah, there are a lot of times where you see that there are people that are away from Allah, away from Islam, but no one's reaching out to them. So there's a disconnect between the religious class and the not-so-religious class. There's grouping. And so the masjid even, the mosque, becomes a clinic that doesn't accept... Uh, Sick people, you know, mm -hmm. people who have issues in their lives don't go to the masjid, nor are they made to feel welcome in the masjid, in the mosque, because they're not dressed properly, they're not worshipping properly, they don't know how to pray, we know what's really going on in your life. The, the masjid is supposed to be for everyone, so the religious class is supposed to go out to those that are falling and faltering and give them advice lovingly and not make them feel like they're, they're, they're irritating them. You know, I, I was reading a study from the Pew Research Center about churches in America, they were saying that young people are turned off by the church because they feel intimidated by the elderly, for example. There's a sense of intimidation. So that intimidation factor has to be removed. And that can be removed from uh, loving advice. And, uh, you know, and, and in fact, one of the other meanings of nasiha is to bond. Mm -hmm. it, it brings people together. And so sometimes that time when you sit down your brother and you, and you talk to him in a loving way and you give him advice... Uh, it's not about the issue at hand anymore. He now trusts you. He loves you. He appreciates the way that you came to him. And so Nasiha actually brings people together. And so that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, is teaching us. That when you see something on Facebook or see something on YouTube or see something on Twitter or hear about something you know, with someone that you know, you should give them the, the dignity of, of, of sitting with them and saying, look, I love you. I care about you. If you need anything, let me know. If there's a reason why you've resorted to the sin, because a lot of times we just, con we just condemn without asking why, perhaps, what led to that sin. Now, why did the people drill the hole in the ship? Because they were thirsty. So why do people commit sin? Because there was something missing in their lives. So perhaps someone committed you know, a sin because there were, there were family issues. So the point is, is that I need to also, part of my giving advice is, is showing concern. Is everything okay? Why did you resort to that in the first place? How can I help you? How can I be there for you? This was a story, actually, someone that took Shahada with me. He became Muslim with me, you know, in college. And um, for a few years, he disappeared from the masjid scene. He disappeared from the mosque. He really wasn't uh, involved in, in the religion anymore. And he calls me out of the blue three, four years later. And I pick up the phone, and I was so shocked that it was him. And, you know, he's going off on Islam, going off on Allah, going off on the Prophet, peace be upon him, just saying blasphemous things. And he's trying to start an argument. And I wasn't responding to him. Okay, so I was being quiet. And, um, you know, at the end, basically, where he ranted on the religion and things of that sort, you know, I told him, I said, well, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way and to each his own. You know, I, I, I certainly don't agree with some of the things that you said. And, you know, hopefully one day we can get together. It's been a long time since we've seen each other anyway. Hopefully one day we can get together mm -hmm. and we can kind of discuss these issues again. He was like, wait, that's it? He was, he was surprised that I didn't go off on him. So I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, you're, you're entitled to, to your views, but, you know, I miss you, man. I haven't seen you for a long time. So mm -hmm. when are we going to get together and maybe we can discuss this over lunch? 
So then he just broke down crying. And so I realized that there was something deeper than that. 